Hey everyone. So in this tutorial today, um, we're going to be covering uh, just the first part of integrating tiled maps uh, and using it with Box 2D. Um, so this is just kind of a tile set that I just threw together, pretty basic, just two colors and simple log and maybe some weird grass. Um, don't mind my pixel art skills right now. Um, but what we're going to be doing is first making a tiled map. And with that, you'll be using the tiled editor, which you can get from, um, I believe it's tiledmaps.com or something. Uh, but libgdx has it all linked to their site, so it, it's pretty easy to find. Um, what we're going to be doing is laying out all our tile, tiles, getting a simple map going, and uh, having our like a polyline kind of trace around the physical objects that we want our objects in our box 2D world to collide with. Um, and I'll, I'll show you that when we get there. So first, what you want to do is create a new map. Um, you want it to be orthogonal, uh, base64, zlib compressed. And it doesn't really matter um, tile render order. I, I mean, I'd probably choose right up, but uh, right down is just fine. It all optimizes itself when it renders. Um, and we're just going to do a simple 12 by 12 box tiled area. And our tiles are 32 by 32 uh, pixels. So we click OK. Uh, we can close that on the one I made. And we're just going to save that real quick. Um, let's go to where our project is. Um, so we need to go to here and Android assets. We're just going to save that in maps. We're going to save it as test map. Um, and it will save as a TMX file type. Okay, and after that, we want to load in our tiled uh, tile set that we'll be using. Um, so we're going to need to pull that in, and you can do that down here with the new tile set button. Um, you can just call it the main uh, based on tile set image. There we go. Source. We can find that. Um, Tile set I showed you, which should be in our project. Go to the Android assets, images, tile set. There we go. Open it up. Um, don't have a transparent color. We just use actual transparency, so that's fine. Um, 32 by 32, so it matches our map. And we can click OK. And once you do that, you're able to start like stamping in squares of tiles that it kind of pre-cuts for you. Um, it'll slice that image into whatever dimensions you gave it, so in our case 32 by 32. Um, so we'll just undo that real quick. And so let's get something going. Um, let's do that. Uh, again, we're just going to be make some, making something really, really simple. As you can kind of see, it's very easy to just get something thrown together. Um, as you just click what you want and kind of drag it around, stamp it everywhere. Um, there we go. Okay, so this is our simple map. And with this, it doesn't really have any properties to it that it can collide with things or anything. There's no data we can essentially read other than the fact that these tiles are here and that's really about it. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to create a new layer. Um, it's going to be an object layer and with that that's going to be we can name it and call it um, collision uh, we'll just call it collision layer 
and that's that. And so now that we have an object layer, you'll see the types are right here. Um, we can now start using this tool uh, to start drawing shapes and stuff, um, which is pretty nice. So we'll just get out of that, and we can start tracing around our map with this line. That'll give us a basic polyline that we can use in our uh, box 2D world, so our objects will collide with it. Um, anything contained or outside will hit this line once we programmatically add it to our physics world. Um, so that's all I wanted to do for this video. We got our map set up and we, of course we'll want to save that. Um, and if we go back in here, uh, you'll notice that in our maps, there it is, great. Um, uh, in the next video, what we're going to do is getting this line to be a world object. So we're just going to look for it and put it in. And we'll also kind of go over other shapes too, uh, such as certain objects like a square um, or just any kind of random polygon. Um, there's a lot of things you can do. I typically tend to use the polyline just because that's more efficient for Box 2D to handle. Um, and it prevents a lot of, like if, if down here, if you rendered all of these as separate squares, your player could get snagged on them or something. It, it just avoids those simple problems, uh, less headache down the road. All right, and so with that, I'll see you in the next video.